This is the third in our series of lectures on equivalence relations, and in this lecture I'm going to talk about the idea of an equivalence class, and I'll give you a few examples of such a thing. So here's the fundamental definition. Um, we start with an equivalence relation R on a set A, and we give ourselves any X in the underlying set A, then we define what we mean by the equivalence class of X. This is how it's denoted, x slash r, and it's defined to be the set of all y in the underlying set A such that x is r related to y. Okay, that's called the equivalence class of x. So the equivalence class of x is an entire subset of the underlying set A. And if we take all of the equivalence classes as a set, the set of all the equivalence classes is known as A modulo R, and it's denoted by A slash R. So A slash R is the set of X slash R, in other words, the set of all equivalence classes um, as, as the X varies over all points of A. Here's a simple example of such a thing. If we let our underlying set be the set of all people living in the United States, <clears throat> and we define the relation R as follows, if X and Y are two people living in the States, we say that X is R related to Y, provided they either both live in the same state or they both live in the District of Columbia. So is that an example of an equivalence relation? Well, I claim it is. Uh, why is it reflexive? So reflexive means um, that given any person living in the United States, that person lives in the same state as that person. So that's obviously true. Why is it symmetric? It means if for any X and Y, for any two people, X and Y, if X lives in the same state as Y, then Y obviously lives in the same state as X. And why is it transitive? For any three people, X, Y, and Z, if X lives in the same state as Y, and Y lives in the same state as Z, then clearly x lives in the same state as z. So this is an equivalence relation. And what is the equivalence class um, of David Singman? Well, I happen to live in Virginia, and so we're asking, what is the set of all people in the United States such that I am related to such a person? Well, it's the set of all people who live in the same state as me, uh, namely the set of all people who live in Virginia. So here you see we're using the notation x slash r. It's the set of all people who live in Virginia. And what is a slash r? a slash r is the set of all possible equivalence classes. So that's the set consisting of all of the states and the District of Columbia. Let's now relate this notion of equivalence classes to a relation that we looked at uh, previously. This was the relation on the set of integers uh, where we said x is related to y provided x minus y is even. So what is the equivalence class of zero? What is the equivalence class of all uh, numbers y such that zero minus y is even? Uh, well that's the set of all y such that minus y is even and that's just precisely the set of even integers. So 0 slash r is the set of all even integers. What is 1 slash r? So 1 slash r is the set of all integers y uh, related to 1. That means 1 minus y is even. And since 1 is odd, the only way 1 minus y can be even is if y is also odd. So 1 slash r is the set of all odd integers. Now I worked out two examples. I worked out the example of 0 slash r and 1 slash r, but I think you'll notice that if x is any even integer, x slash r is the set of all integers y such that x minus y is even. Since x is even, the only way that can happen is if y is even. So x slash r will come out to be the same as this. It's the set of all even integers. And similarly, um, if y is any odd integer, the only way a y minus something can be even 
is if that something is also odd, and therefore y slash r is the same as 1 slash r, namely it's the set of all odd integers. So that means that there are exactly two different equivalence classes. There are, there's this one, and there's this one. And every element of the underlying set z lies either in this equivalence class or in this equivalence class. And so those equivalence classes partition the set of all integers into these two sets. And that turns out to be something that um, all equivalence relations have in common, namely that the set of all distinct equivalence classes will always partition the underlying set. But that's a theorem that we'll come to a little bit later.